Hello everyone, and thank you for coming. Today I'd like to tell you about our work on a new consistency model, regular sequential serializability. Web applications today execute across many machines. Users interact with applications on their devices, and these devices will then send requests to one or more web servers. Together, these machines execute the distributed application. Applications are often supported by a set of services, for instance, a distributed database. As part of a service's interface, it provides some set of guarantees, called a consistency model, about how it behaves in the face of concurrent operations. Consistency models impact both applications and services. For applications, strong consistency models ensure a large set of invariants hold while weaker models guarantee fewer invariants. For example, an invariant stating that a read never returns null may hold while an application uses a strictly serializable database, but not with a serializable one. On the other hand, a weaker invariant can hold with both. For services, strong consistency models restrict the space of designs, while weaker models allow more possibilities. This means services with weaker consistency can achieve better performance. Existing consistency models thus offer a trade-off. To get better performance, one must give up correctness. Our new consistency model aims to ease this trade-off. Regular sequential serializability is the first consistency model that is invariant equivalent to strict serializability. This means that invariants that hold with strict serializability will also hold with RSS. On the other hand, RSS opens up new service designs. For example, we'll show later how we can design a variant of Google's Spanner database that is allowed by RSS, but not by strict serializability. And further, our variant achieves better performance for read-only transactions. Regular sequential serializability provides three guarantees. First, it guarantees a total order of transactions. Second, it guarantees this order is consistent with causality. And third, it guarantees this order respects some real-time constraints. In particular, reads must return values at least as new as the most recent write. At a high level, the first two guarantees give RSS invariant equivalence. The last ensures that applications built using RSS services don't expose anomalies, which are behaviors that violate users' expectations. Let's look at an example to understand how RSS and strict serializability differ. Suppose we have some application process updating keys X and Y from zero to one. Here, time flows from left to right and the vertical bars denote the beginning and end of the transaction. Now suppose some other process reads the right of X. Strict serializability requires all future read-only transactions to also see process one's writes. So process three's read of Y here must also return one. On the other hand, while a write is in progress, RSS only requires causally later read-only transactions to return the new writes. So R2 can return one or zero. RSS thus gives more flexibility to read-only transactions, which enables new service designs. And because RSS respects causality, it provides this flexibility without breaking applications. Informally, our invariant equivalence theorem states that any application invariant that holds while an application runs on a strictly serializable service will also hold while the same application runs on an RSS service. This means that if I build a correct application using a strictly serializable database, and then I swap the database out for one that guarantees RSS, the application will still be correct. The key idea in our proof of invariant equivalence is that we can transform any RSS execution into one that satisfies strict serializability. And importantly, the two executions will be indistinguishable to the application processes. So let's consider the example we showed previously. 
RSS guarantees that there exists some total order of transactions. In this case, the order is R2, W1, R1. To transform this into a strictly serializable execution, we can stretch and shrink the time between events at each process until two things happen. First, the transactions don't overlap in real time. And second, the order of the transactions matches the total order. Because the total order respects causality, we're guaranteed this can be done without reordering any of the execution steps at any of the processes. So this execution is indistinguishable from the original RSS one. And now that the transactions don't overlap in real time, this execution satisfies strict serializability. We describe in our paper how to use this transformation to show that RSS is invariant equivalent to strict serializability. We'll now look at how RSS can unlock better performance for Spanner. Spanner's read-write transactions use two-phase locking and a variant of two-phase commit. For example, suppose we have two shards and an application process that is writing keys X and Y. For simplicity, we'll ignore replication here. To commit, the process sends a message to each shard. The participant then acquires its locks and sends a message to the coordinator that it is prepared to commit. The coordinator then acquires its locks, commits the write of X, and unlocks. It then notifies the application process and the participant, which then commits the write of Y and also unlocks. Spanner also has fast read-only transactions to support read-heavy workloads. For example, process R1 can read key X in one round trip between it and the shard. But during conflicting read-write transactions, read-only transactions must sometimes block. For instance, suppose process R2 wants to read key Y. Ideally, we'd like its read-only transaction to return immediately, but this is not safe under strict serializability. Since R1 already read the new value of X, Strict serializability requires all future reads to include the new writes. And since R2 doesn't know whether there is some other process reading at another shard, it has to be conservative. And so it blocks until it learns that the read-write transaction committed. On the other hand, under RSS, only reads that causally follow R1's read must include the new values of X and Y. Thus, R2's read can return immediately, reducing its latency. Our evaluation of Spanner RSS answers two questions about its performance. First, it demonstrates that it improves tail latency for read-only transactions. And second, it shows that its protocol changes impose minimal overhead. Due to the limited amount of time, we'll focus here on the first. For our evaluation, we re-implemented Spanner's protocol. Our experiments ran on Amazon's EC2, and we used the retwist workload with keys generated according to a Ziphian distribution. We compare the latency distributions for read-only transactions when plotted on a log scale. We first plot Spanner's distribution. While its read-only transactions are fast most of the time, their latency starts increasing around P99. Because it can avoid blocking in some cases, Spanner RSS improves this latency. And at this skew, Spanner RSS reduces latency by up to 45%. I'll now briefly summarize another system we developed called Griff RSC, which is a variant of the Griff key value store. Griff RSC relaxes Griff's consistency model from linearizability to regular sequential consistency, which is the non-transactional equivalent of RSS. This allows Griff RSC to cut the number of quorum round trips in its read protocol from two to one. As a result, it reduces tail read latency by about half, all while imposing little additional overhead. In conclusion, our work presents two new consistency models to ease the trade-off between application correctness and service performance. RSS and RSC are the first consistency models that are invariant equivalent to strict serializability and linearizability. 
This allows developers to move their applications to use RSS and RSC services with the guarantee that their applications won't break. Further, because RSS and RSC relax the constraints on reads, they enable new service designs. We showed two examples, variants of Spanner and Griff, which both offer significant reductions in tail read latency. Thank you, and I'd now be happy to answer any questions.